So you hear about Day of the Dead, but all you hear is the commercial aspects of that, as we now have them, and not the origins. For many centuries, it was a holiday, of a holy day. It was Christian and, and very much um, transformed when it comes to the Americas with the indigenous views of death and dying. And so I don't explicitly say that anywhere in the book on purpose. I don't want to be preachy and, <laughs> and be teaching lessons about synchronicity and uh, the symbiosis and the hybridity of culture. But I want it to be reflected in the character's experiences. Cabañuelas is a story um, that takes place in Spain during a period when the protagonist is doing research on a Fulbright. And the research is supposed to link to South Texas, and it does. But there's also a love story, a love story of the land, first of all, because the protagonist is yearning for her home, for the land. I think it's, a, it's also an immigrant narrative, although Nena is not an immigrant to Spain. She's not going to stay there and live, but it raises a lot of the issues that are there for immigrants. Audre Lorde has a book about mythography. She's an African-American feminist, lesbian writer that I was blessed to meet once when I was in graduate school. She came to our campus and gave a talk. And late, years later, she published this book on automythography. And that idea first came to me there that we could talk about our own myths, our own histories, our own ethnographic reality in writing. But I didn't write about it. I didn't do anything until years later. Yeah, the first Fulbright was my dissertation, and it was a, a folk play, a pastorela. And so I didn't travel. I just stayed in Madrid and did the research and wrote. You can spend your whole life in the books, <laughs> in the library, and not have to be out there doing the field work and just reading about something or getting out there and living. When I wrote Canicula, I didn't have a genre. <laughs> you know, in the, when you fill out the, the forms for the press, they ask what genre. <laughs> oh, well, it's fiction, because a lot of it is fiction. And I said, but it's not. It's also my life. I have my pictures in there. It's really ethnographic, because there's so many stories about all kinds of traditions and foods and dance and matachines and all this. And so I, I was a friend who actually coined it, and she said, well, why don't you call it autobio, uh, autobiography? And I said, well, autobiography, it's autobiography. And she said, yeah, but the ethnographic part, ah, that's what I called it, creative autobioethnography. That traditional culture that I know so intimately kind of becomes almost a, another protagonist. The tamalada at the beginning where they're making the tamales, that whole scene, it's every year we do that. And so it's, and not just me, a lot of families in Laredo do that. A lot of families in Texas do that. In fact, when I lived in DC, a bunch of us got together and had a tamalada. Because <laughs> it's part of what you do, it's ritualistic almost. The tamalada has all those different generations making tamales, and everybody has an assigned task, and everybody's part of the whole. I think it's important and critical for us as a collective, as a community, to reaffirm and, est and establish how these traditions have survived all kinds of attempts at dismantling them. For Nena, the past is something she almost worships. I mean, the fact that she brings in the antepasados and, and she's always kind of going back to the grandmother or to Laredo, or she's always bringing that in. And she's in the present in Spain, but it's not about the present. She's always going back with the fiestas. Everything is about the past, very little about the future. And so it is somewhat my story as a writer. I don't believe writers when they say that they're totally 
disassociated from their characters. At least for me, every single character has a little bit of me. I mean, I'm, I'm the one kind of sifting that life in, onto the page, so it carries something of me.